Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms chapter 9, verse 8, as well as Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for giving me back my voice. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing your people. Lord God, only you know what each person is going through. Only you know how much time we have left. And we give you praise and glory for whatever that time is, Lord. We ask you to bless this word, Lord. We know that it's from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. Psalms 9, verse 8. And he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the people with uprightness. So we know that the Lord is a, a wonderful, prudent judge. He really um, takes his time as he, he doesn't have to take his time. He's God. Um, he he really takes care is what I mean to say um, with equal measures, right? Making sure that everything um, is just due. Everything is just right. He keeps perfect records. As a matter of fact, that word uprightness means evenness, uprightness, straightness, equity, smooth and level. And the word righteousness means justice, rightness, just weights and measure. So in other words, he makes sure that the the weight um and the the with the wrath with which he judges or or the mercy or the grace with which he judges is equal to what was shown right it is equal to what was given he he makes sure that each thing is measured out properly right he, we don't get a, a measure of of judgment that is not um not due to us what was already due to us he makes sure that it is exactly what we deserve and remember the wages of sin is death there is no other um weight so if if it was a wrong done death is the the um equal measure for it so it says and he judges the world with righteousness um he judges the people with uprightness. And so the world will be judged as well as the peoples within the world. So um, let's go ahead and keep going. The conflation here today is Isaiah chapter 13, verse 10. For the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. Um that I said constellations, <laughs> constellations. Um, so yeah, and this is this is actually talking about the judgment and the fall of Babylon. And um, we know that this is also mentioned in the book of Revelation, um, that the stars of the heavens, um, the book of Revelation actually says um, that a third of the stars will be swept by the dragon's tail, right? And so there's going to be great movement in the heavens and uh, at the destruction of Babylon, right? And and you usually stars um, usually have a spiritual meaning and you have a physical meaning. So you have these physical stars that we can see that are are going to be swept away, right? And and we're we're like, well, what? Why are they swept away? Because spiritually there is great great movement in the heavenlies. So what we cannot see is being moved as well. So if, if a great amount of stars is falling, then more than likely spiritually, these demonic um, beings are falling as well that we cannot see because usually um, the stars um, will represent um, um, heavenly beings, right? And they could be um, whatever type of Elohim, it will be um, demonic, the ones that are actually falling, but also the the regular stars that don't fall are going to be the ones that um, most likely represent uh, heavenly beings, right? That are not going to fall, which would be like angels and other things um, that the Lord has created. So it says, for the stars of the heavens and their constellations will not give their light. So for some reason, there's going to be a blackout, right? So there's going to be some sort of heavenly occurrence that will cause the shining which usually shining means glory right their their gloriousness to to stop right for a moment and we know there's going to be a pause in heaven as well so who knows if they're actually linked together but this is going to happen there's going to be a, a lack of shining for a moment 
a moment in time. We um, And it says the sun will be dark at its rising, meaning that the sun itself will be there. But for some reason, it will not be shining. It will not be giving its glory, right? And it says, and the moon will not shed its light. So um, the, we know that the moon actually reflects the sun. So it's not making its actual own light. It's a lesser light that is reflecting the light of the sun. So if the sun goes out, then the moon is going to go out as well. So it says the sun will be dark at its rising. The moon will not shed its light. And we know that uh, life on earth would um, cease to exist if if just for a few days um, um, over a certain time frame, um, there was no sun because there would be no um no actual photosynthesis going on. Um, the animals would not have food to eat, right? And we are, we would be amongst them. So, and then the animals would die and we would die. So this is, we don't know um, exactly how long in time it would take, but we know that there is going to be a point where there's going to be a cutoff of light for a moment in time. And it says the sun will be dark at its rising and the moon will not shed its light. Um, the lights of the heavens, according to Genesis 1.14, um, are to divide the day from the night for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So we know that when there is no light in the heavens that is a sign that something is happening there's a cosmic shift there's a shift happening and it's being symbolized in the heavens right it's not just a shift of physical nature of oh look there's a there's the sun isn't shining it's physically something happening no this is a spiritual occurrence that's also happening as well and it it is um a season is shifting a time frame is shifting and this is coming because the Lord is giving us this as a conflation scripture. So he's letting us know, Hey, there's a shift coming. There's a season change coming. And so it says for signs and seasons and for days and years, Luke 21, 25 says, and there shall be signs in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So that's Luke 21, 28. And so they are signs in the heavens, right? Of the distress of nations with perplexity. We know that at the coming of the Lord, um, Babylon will fall sometime around that time, according to the book of Revelation. And so this, just imagine, okay, if you have a nation that is powerful, in the earth and everyone's following them and everyone's selling to them. And that's the, the world's way of making money is selling to this um, consuming nation. Um, if that nation falls, then all of the world will be sent into distress and perplexity. Where are we going to get our money from? Where are we going to be able to, to buy food from? Where are we going to, how are we going to buy food if we don't have money flowing through our systems, right? So it's going to send a great distress around the world. We know that with COVID, just people going inside their own houses for a, a few months um, caused the whole world to kind of stop functioning properly. So imagine if an entire nation that is a lead nation falls, um, it, it will cause a great disturbance around the world that will ricochet around the world. It says, um, the stars upon the earth, just, um, let me reread it. And there shall be signs in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So remember, these are physical occurrences that are happening in the sky that are representing spiritual shifts of season. All right. And so, you know, this is the, the conflation that the Lord um, gave me today. And it is talking about the fact that he is going to judge the world with righteousness. He's going to judge the people with uprightness. He's not going to do it in a way um, that is not right and not proportion. If you're not under the covering, then that is your, um, that's going to be your lot right? You're going to face this judgment. If you do have a covering, then you will not face this judgment, right? And, and because he's going to do it in righteousness and uprightness, he's not going to pour out a bunch of wrath on someone who is covered, someone who has righteousness, someone who is, is, is upright. How do you become upright? You need a covering from a Messiah, something that is perfect. Um, and that is through Christ Jesus. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, I thank you for our covering. I thank you that 
this wrath that is about to be poured out and the signs that are going to occur in the heavens um, are, are, are going to happen. But Lord God, I thank you that you always have a way of watching out for your people. You always have a way of keeping your people, those who have chosen you and those who love you and, and seek after you and abide in you, God. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you that you're even going to be a keeper of the remnant. Yes, they may go through this distress, this perplexity, Lord God, but we ask you, Jesus, to just keep them in the palm of your hand. We know that you will not leave them or forsake them. Your spirit may not be there, but you can see them and you care for them, Lord God. We love you and we praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there, well, let me just stop it here. If you if you need Christ in your heart, just accept him into your heart. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can get to the Father but through him. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.